So hello everybody, we are here to briefly discuss uh, uh, the pros and cons of uh, having a multi-touch uh, setup for your flight simming. Uh, in my case I'm using, uh, as you probably know, Flight Simulator 2004. And the first obvious uh, pro is that uh, a multi-touch setup is flexible. So you can have many, many aircrafts uh, in your, your setup, simultaneously. Uh, as you can see, creating a cockpit environment is uh, very, very easy. Uh, I made uh, uh, a full cockpit environment using a, a three touch screen panel, one for the pedestal here and one for the main panel and the one for the overhead panel and uh, as I am uh, uh, a little uh, uh, I have a little problem with space in my room uh, as you can see this is a very very small room and I decided to not to have more than one screen for the external view but I opted for a big screen this is uh, uh, a 42 inches uh, ultra high definition TV used for the external uh, uh, for the external view and this is uh, configured as the main screen uh, uh, namely the screen on which uh, the desktop is uh, is uh, is uh, projected so here you we have uh, many many flights uh, uh, saved inside the Flight Simulator 2004 and uh, I have a previous video in which uh, I demonstrated how easily I can select the flight now for example we choose the 747 by iFlying and we set start flight and uh, while the simulator is coming up uh, we have to wait a little Okay, here we are. You can see that every panel is uh, have to be detached from the main uh, flight simulator uh, screen. So with the right click on every panel, I select detach panel and every panel automatically detach and is projected on on uh, the relative touch screen. Okay, I detached all the panels and we are ready to go to full screen, but before going to full screen, I want to show you, I want to show you the wall, the wall environment. As you can see, every panel is uh, detached on the res its uh, respective monitor. Okay, so the pedestal here. And the main panel every single screen pop-up the external view and the overhead panel all right so now we can go to full screen and here we go This is the final appearance of uh, the wall cockpit. This is more or less what you can see from your eyes when you are at the pilot seat. It's very pretty realistic. And this, this is uh, so. This is the obvious, the obvious pro of the multi-touch setup. You can have a pretty realistic cockpit, uh, and you can simulate every kind of aircraft you want. 
Now we focus a little on the overhead and we start the aircraft. So I'm trying to uh, send my power on auto and battery on. APU on and start. Now focus a little on the overhead panel and uh, let's discuss to a possible con of uh, having a, a multi-touch setup and this is relative to the right click spots. So using Windows it is possible using a touch screen to simulate the right click spots uh, because uh, Windows 7 has feature uh, that allow you to do that and you can uh, uh, tell to the, to the computer that you are doing a right click spot simply keeping pressing for more than one second on a specific spot for example uh, let's choose uh, uh, the packs the pack spot here Okay, this is the rotary pack. As you can see, if I press one time, nothing happens. Because in order to rotate this knob on the right side, you have to do a right click. So if, you, if I want to, do, to move this knob on the right side, I have to keep press for more than one second, and it will go on the right side. If I want to go back on the left side, I have to do a rapid touch and uh, the PC will consider this as a left click. So overall it's uh, not so uh, difficult to operate uh, uh, rotaries with a touch screen setup. As you can imagine it is very very easy to use uh, uh, left click buttons because they are pretty straightforward I'm showing you here on the fuel panel that is very very easy to operate operate buttons left click buttons I am in a, an unusual position so but nevertheless as you can see it's very very easy to operate any button this is the bus tie, the generator, as you can see, everything is quite straightforward. Uh, let's go down for a moment to the pedestal. Let's discuss about the pedestal for a little. This is one of the, of the most used part of the aircraft, which is the FMC. So the FMC fortunately has only left click spots, so it is quite easy to, uh, to use uh, FMC with a touch screen setup, uh, providing that you uh, have a big touch screen monitor because uh, buttons are, there are many many buttons, many many buttons on the FMC. So if you use a small screen, these buttons will be small and it will be quite difficult to uh, type on the keyboard. Uh, this is a, you are seeing here a 32 inches monitor uh, and uh, using a 32 inches monitor, it is easy to uh, write down, to type on the keyboard without any difficulty. For example, here I am in a Lima, India my Charlie and I put it on the origin and the destination for example will be Lima India Romeo Foxtrot and I put it on the destination as you can see there aren't any problem operating the FMC using a touchscreen setup uh, so 
So let's switch on the APU generator in order to have have the the MCP oper operational. Okay, MCP. The MCP is the most difficult part uh, in the sense that the MCP usually have knobs, for example, this on the altitude knob, which in many, many aircraft are operated using left click and for decreasing and right click for increasing. So for decreasing, there aren't any problem. You can see, if I do multiple touch, tick, 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 like, like this, it goes down. Uh, it is possible to uh, have a continuous left click uh, simply pressing a little, you have to, uh, <laughs> how, how can I say that, uh, you have to train a little about it. Uh, and the, the, uh, the trick is to uh, click one time and then, and then make a little movement with the finger, as you can see, okay? So if you click one time and then hop a little movement, downward for example uh, this will we, will be interpreted as a, a continuous left click spot if you want to uh, increase the value you have to do a, a right click spot so you have to keep it pressed but as you can see I have it's quite cumbersome if I want to for example set the 30,000 feet I have to click wait one second 600 click wait one second 700 and <laughs> it will take almost all the day to <laughs> to come to 30,000 feet so there is another trick here you have to keep pressed and move them and then you keep pressed and as you can see it goes faster and it goes upward Okay. Good it out. In other words, uh, this is the only part of the aircraft when, where you have to, uh, the MCP, I mean, uh, where you have to, uh, where you, you need uh, continuous right click or continuous left click. And in order to do continuous right click or continuous left click, you have to press and move a little the finger. It's quite easy why, uh, when uh, you, are, uh, you, you are a little trained on it, uh, but nevertheless it's a very very fast learning, I, I have no problem with this. No problem, obviously, with uh, single-click uh, uh, spots like the flight director buttons or auto throttle or if uh, uh, if uh, uh, spots, if uh, buttons, and so on. Uh, so okay. Uh, as a final consideration, I can. I can tell you that I will not move from this uh, from this kind of setup. I had uh, uh, an hardware cockpit of a 737 with uh, full hardware uh, uh, full hardware uh, parts in the past, but uh, I find that a touchscreen setup is uh, is uh, much 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 more interesting and offers you uh, many, many opportunities that you don't have with, uh, with an hardware setup. So I will continue, absolutely continue this way uh, uh, in order to make my flight simulator activity. So thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day.